kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone. So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the... Um, and your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, Hey everyone out there in YouTube land and Facebook world. I'm sorry if I'm a little dark over here and then try to bring the light in. Uh, anyways, I wanted to, uh, I have the uh, best way to introduce this wonderful lady, Wendy Patton. And I am very, very glad that I had the opportunity to bring her on our podcast to give you guys all the value as much as possible to see and just to absorb. I've been going to her meetups every single month, every single month. And I, I, I always look forward to uh, just meet and green with her, just listening to her and all her seller finance stories and, and all her stories from when she got started. So I wanted to bring all that to you guys and, and everybody out there on YouTube land and Facebook and our Facebook group. Uh, we had some technical difficulties, but we're getting it handled. And I'm so happy to introduce Wendy Patton. Wendy, how are you doing today? Great. Thank you, Randy. I, I had to move to a different location, so hopefully this is that's good. That's okay. Yes, that's awesome. So hopefully we're not, uh, the internet signal is not in and out. So, <laughs> you Yeah, you think you'd, you know, if you pay enough for the internet, I always get, <laughs> I want the highest speed, speed. And then, man, it has the worst problems. So anyway. I'm Most glad to definitely. be here. Thank you for the nice words. And I'm really glad to be on your show today. Awesome. Thank you. I do appreciate that. And, you know, we got, a, we got over um, in our Facebook group, Metro Detroit off market real estate group. We got over 5,000 members in that wow. group. So, so not only my YouTube channel, but we're also going to, we're streaming to that uh, Facebook group as well. So um, it is really good. And uh, so we have some people, uh, AJ Amin says, hey, Wendy, thanks for joining. So uh, got a lot of people coming in here. They can, and by the way, if you're out there, put some questions in the chat as we go, we'll get to them as we, as we go. So first thing I wanted to do is, is kind of get, you know, I know that how you kind of got started because I've been to enough of your meetups. So by the way, one of your meetups is happening this Thursday yeah, and yeah. I cannot wait. It's at the um, Michigan State Community Center, right? Uh, in yeah. Troy. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, make sure you be there. Unfortunately, I can't make it because I got to be out of town for my day job. You know, got to pay those bills, right? <laughs> yep, yep. I <laughs> but, but it's got, definitely going to be a great meetup. Uh, so I always recommend you go. And... Um, so with that being said, can I tell us a little bit like how you got started in real estate? Like, did you just wake up and say one day and just say, I'm going to get into real estate? <laughs> no, actually, the, the weird thing is, well, I, I started when I was young and okay. I had graduated from the University of Colorado. I'm from Colorado, was born and raised there, military brat. Okay. And my my mom had gone to some real estate investing seminar thing. Like now that I host at the Michigan Real Estate Investors Group, she went mm -hmm. to a seminar like that years ago. Okay. And she heard a speaker, I don't remember who it is, but she bought the guy's course. Cause she okay. said, you know, Wendy, I, you know, she told me later, like I, I knew that real estate investing was the way to future financial freedom. So she got home with the course though, and there was one big problem at home and it was my dad. You know, he said, no, yeah. we're not investing in real estate. We're not gonna do that. So she gave the course to me when I was moving to Michigan. And on the way to Michigan, I started listening to that course the whole way in the car because <laughs> I had to drive a couple days, right? So I'm like listening yep. to it over and over. And back then it was cassettes, right? In the yep. 80s. And I remember thinking when I was driving, like, gosh, I, I want to be a real estate investor. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to go take that job I just took. I mean, I want to start this right away. But I did take my job. 
And I remember it said that you, you should join a real estate investor group if you're serious about investing. So I did. I joined a local group in Michigan and learned about real estate investing. And I remember, um, you know, sitting there in one of the meetings and some we, we were at round tables because if you wanted to go have dinner first, then you would sit at a round table. If you wanted to come to the seminar, you came later. Well, I did right. the dinner because I did anyway. And my company paid for it because <laughs> I was in a hotel because they okay. had they moved so many people into Michigan at the time that we were all living in a hotel, mm -hmm. some hotels. So okay. that's kind of how it started, Randy. I, I had an opportunity to buy buy a house to live in versus just renting. And okay, all, the, yeah. all the apartments were six months wedding list. So we were in hotels and I was everywhere. I mean, it was just the whole thing was gridlocked. And so as I was sitting, you know, at this meeting one night, it was a round table and everyone said like, where do you live? Where do you live? Where do you live? And it got to me and they go, where do you live? And I go, red roof in room 101. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, what? And I go, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm one of those people, blah, blah, blah. And they go, well, why don't you just buy a house? And I go, ha that's funny. And they go, no, seriously, why don't you? And I said, well, let's, let's see, let's start with, I make $10 an hour. And they said, so, and I said, well, um, I don't have any savings, so um, I don't know how to do it. So, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> just you were looking a for so, me. So, so, okay. Yes, what's All your right. excuse? What's your real excuse, yeah. Wendy? And I yeah. was like, I, I just didn't know. Like, I didn't even know anything. And someone said, well, you know, why don't you just use your credit card, get a credit card and, you know, take a cash advance and that could be your down payment. Well, mm -hmm. back in the 80s, you could do that. You didn't have to season funds. You could just take a cash advance, put it right in your account. And that was my down payment. So I bought my first property in St. Clair Shores, Michigan. And um, okay. and back then, I, you know, it was a four bed, a three bedroom and mm -hmm. it was $438 a month. And okay. um, so I and I rented two of the bedrooms to two ladies in my hotel at two fifty a month each. So I was making like 62 bucks a month which paid my yeah. rent, my my credit card payment. So I was living free and I thought, well, I'm so cool. You know, this is really cool. Well, they didn't call it house hacking back then, but that's what it was, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I house hacked, I guess that's what it is. And I lived free. So that worked out really, really well for me. And that's that's how I got started. And then I started okay. learning, I, again, I, I did that a few times, but then I learned about creative financing, which kept me from having to use credit cards and debt mm -hmm. and things like that. You know, because I didn't know about that in the beginning. And just to let people know out there, you can't do that now. You can't put credit, right. you can't put your down payment on a house through a cash advance on a credit card. Right. You just can't, unfortunately. Well, if you sit there for like maybe 90 or 120 days or however long it has to season yeah. where they don't question it, then maybe. But I mean, you really don't want to do that anyways, because there's creative ways yes. you can buy real estate without doing that. The idea is to stay creative no matter what. Yeah. You know, um, so 100%. So with that, how did you get into creative financing and, and do obviously the house hacking and stuff like that? Yeah. But how did you find out about creative financing? Was well, it another it was seminar? Attending <laughs> seminars, you know, I always okay. encourage people like go to as much as you can, learn as much as you can. It doesn't matter which technique you end up with. They all work. People always ask me, which one should I do? Which one do you want to do? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. do you want to be a rehabber, a wholesaler, a lease option person, creative financing? It's just that that's kind of what was my niche. And it started mm -hmm. with a seminar and it was actually a seminar on sandwich leases. I bought a, okay. actually it was probably from Jeffrey Taylor, <laughs> Mr. Landlord back in the long time ago. He had this mm -hmm. book for like 39 bucks on how to sandwich leases. So if you could find someone who wanted to rent the property for 750 and you knew it would rent for a thousand, you would keep the 250 difference. Yep. But then later, so I started with that and I, I had a couple of really good ones. My first one was like $600 a month net mm -hmm. in, uh, in Rochester. And I had that one for years. This guy just won a 900 and I rented it for 1500 <laughs> and I didn't know yeah. what I was doing, but I was, but he didn't want to sell. Mm -hmm. And so then I learned a little more later about lease options. So then I learned how to okay. sandwich lease option. So I didn't just get the lease. I wanted to get the right to buy that property and the right to sell that property. So that's how okay. I got into the whole creative financing thing. And then I got into subject twos when a friend of mine challenged, I, I was just like, I mean, I was slam dunking those things, Randy. I was like doing so many of them. I would just kept doing them, wow. doing them, doing them. I just got a niche and I just got good at it and mm -hmm. didn't try to be the best of everything, right? 
And um, I've always done rehab, so pretty much, yeah. maybe since the late 90s I've or mid 90s, I've really, I've always done rehabs. I, I've never really speak on rehabs, but mm -hmm. I, I'm almost always have had a rehab going in all these years and sometimes three, four crews at a time going. But, but in the meantime, I got really good at lease options and I had this friend, a guy mm -hmm. that only did subject twos. And okay. he said, well, why don't you just get the deed? And I said, well, my people, my sellers are too smart for that. He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, they're, they're educated people. They're typically moving from a 250 to a five, four or $500,000 home. Right. And he goes, and, and you think that they're too smart to give you the deed? And I go, well, I just mean like they're, they're not that desperate, which they're not usually that mm -hmm. desperate. And he said, well, have you ever asked? And I said, no. And he goes, I bet you someone would give it to you. And I said, I don't think so. And so the first I said, he goes, I'll challenge you. And I go, okay, next time someone calls me and if they call me to ask me, I'll just ask them if they'll give me the deed. So mm -hmm. I got a call from a, um, a couple, it was a guy and his wife was in the background. And he said, hey, you bought my neighbor's house on a some kind of lease thing and you bought it. And you know, he didn't know what it was called, but. <laughs> and I said, yeah, yep. And he said, um, we're wondering if you might be, we might consider buying ours. So I okay. asked a few questions, found out they already had found their new home, but they needed about two grand to move. And that okay. was it. And they weren't behind in payments. They, you know, they qualified for another mortgage. So there was no issue. Yeah. And I said, well, let me ask you a question. And he goes, okay. And I said, well, would you be willing to sign over the deed to your home? And I'll start making your mortgage payments and I'll give you two grand to walk or to, to move. I didn't say walk. We, yeah. we use that. I mean, I said, you know, you to gotta move. use their terminology, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, well, I'll give you two grand um, to, to move. And he said, oh no, let me find out. Hey honey, uh, this is that Wendy girl that Gina referred to us. And just wondering if, you know, she asked if we give her the deed to our house and she'll make our mortgage payments, but she'll give us two grand so we can move. What do you think, hon? And I hear her go, fine with me. And he goes, yeah, we'll do it. And I went, <laughs> that was my first one. So, you know, it just goes to show that you just don't know what people will do or why they do it. They have different motivations right. than we do. You know, not a, and that's the thing, not everybody is an investor. You know, you can, you own, even though you own your own home, you're not an investor. You don't know right. all these strategies. You right. just want to move on to the next thing. Right. You know? And, and you don't and know what their motivation is, you know? So we have uh, a quick question and I think this kind of ties into everything here. Um, Anthony C Sierra, Sierra, and I'm sorry if I butchered that last name, um, said, you know, for someone who is new at this, what is creative financing and creative financing is a broad term of a lot of things put together yeah. so i'll let i'll let wendy explain kind of what that you know what we use create the word creative financing for yeah you're totally right it's <clears throat> it you know creative financing is a variety of different techniques that are creative ways to buy mm -hmm. real estate without using your own mortgage or usually your own credit either and sometimes right. not your own cash so example a lease option is not actually financing with the seller, but it would fall under that umbrella of mm -hmm. creative ways to buy real estate. Um, but it is not actually seller financing, but it's creative financing. Um, right. Subject twos, where you get the deed from a property subject mm -hmm. to their mortgage. So they, they have the mortgage on their property. They give you the deed. You're now the owner and you start making the mortgage payments. Sometimes you give them some money down sometimes they pay you to take it <laughs> yeah that's really cool <laughs> sometimes they actually pay you. Um, it depends on what they owe and and what's going on in the market yep. at the time you know and what their terms oh, yeah. are and their mortgage so that's one land contracts are creative financing in michigan and yes. we have those mostly in the midwest but it's mm -hmm. it's like where the seller holds the mortgage basically um it's a little bit more than that in michigan but that's it in a nutshell. And anything that's kind of creative where the the, the seller um, does more than just the typical, okay, give me cash or give me a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Cash me out, I'm done. It's anything that's kind of beyond that. Yeah, and w what I find funny was um, every state for land contracts, um, in another state, it might be called something different, yes. but it's the same thing. It's like, for right. instance, uh, Lee of Dew or Lee of Deed of Lou, I think it's called. And I'm probably saying it out of order, yeah. but uh, 
you know, other other states have it. It's just named different, and yeah, but the same sh- concept is there. Yeah, a land contract is is usually called like a contract for deed. So you have yes. a contract, and you get the deed when you finish the contract, and it's just an amortization schedule. And mm-hmm. in a lot of states, it could be called a deed of trust, which is like yep. in Arizona, it's called a deed of trust. But really, that's like their mortgage documents. Mm-hmm. They don't really have a, a land contract per se. So okay. it is, and so when you say land contract, if you're talking to someone in California, they're gonna be like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Like <laughs> exactly. Midwest, <laughs> Illinois, Ohio, um, Indiana, Michigan, mm-hmm. for sure. We, we call them land contracts. Most definitely. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room 